Hi there, everybody. We are wrapping up the first day of estimating populations with confidence intervals, or at least what's going to become confidence intervals. So I want to go through the critical stuff, um, the important information that's going through things. All of this stuff, remember, can be found over at Stats Medic. Um, I have links down here below as well for my notes. Um, and if you have any comments or and if we have anything, it's always down there. And while I down there, hit like, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. And leave a comment if you want. So first of all, critical values. Um, critical values, we're going to use this thing called T star. And what T star does is that it kind of, remember the, the more that you have, the more, the bigger of a sample that you have, the small, the tighter and taller your normal curve will be. And so because of that, theoretically, if you had a sample size of infinity, your T score would be the same thing as our Z scores used to be. So it's kind of scaled on that. So if you can have that in the back of your head. So we're going to go down here. And so T-scores we're going to use for estimating. Degrees of freedom, remember from what we talked about, was going to be that it's always going to be N minus 1. And the reason why it's N minus 1 is that when you get down to those last two people being chosen, let's say, for a team, if I pick this one, this person has to go to the other team. If I pick this one, this one has to go to the other team. So that second to last person pick actually determines two picks so there's actually only two choice so there's always one less choice of what's going on because of that um table b and i'll show you how to use this here in a second you're going to use degrees of freedom and confidence levels to find t and you're always going to round down and what do i mean by that so if we go over here to table b so anyway so what will end up happening here then is that let's say if we had 10 degrees of freedom and we wanted this tail up here to be five percent okay and so that means that the right-hand tail would be 5%. So we're looking for a confidence level of 90 because we're going on both sides, right? So that means that I would go 10 and over here, and that would be, I would use the T star value of 1.82. Let's say I was doing a 95% confidence interval, and I was looking for 35 degrees of freedom, right? So the thing is that 35 isn't here on my list. And remember, we always go more conservative because we want to make sure that everything that we talk about is included. If we went up to 40, there'd be that what would happen in, because, I mean, if you look over here, we've got this difference right here, right? So we've got a two-tenths uh, or two-hundredths of a T-score different. And so what ends up happening then, then, is that, well, okay, so if we had 35, if we went up, we'd be including some of the numbers that would not necessarily be included. So we're going to use, we would use this one instead. So always round down if you have a choice there. All right. So let's go back here. A little bit of a delay, sorry. So now in terms of the conditions, these won't sound super um, unfamiliar. First one is random. It's either going to say that you have a random sample, or if you're doing the experiment um, or the study, you need to have a random assignment. Both of those will meet those conditions. Number two, 10% rule, not super surprising. Obviously, this is so that we don't have to worry about replacement of items. So because of that, then 10, um, your sample always has to be less than 10% of the population size. And then the last one, normal or large sample. And for this one, you've got three different options. Any of these three will go ahead and work. You can either have, if you know the population distribution is normal, then we can use it. If you um, make sure the sample size is um, sufficiently large, so at least 30 or larger, that would also work. And in cases where you're less than 30, and we'll talk more about this throughout the rest of this unit, um, if you look at the data and there's no strong skew or there's no outliers, you can say, okay, looks relatively normal, that's gonna be good enough for us, all right? Now, now for your check for understanding, we're just gonna kind of work on some skill-based things here. I'm going to have you guys go through and find some T-scores for T-star scores first, and then we'll do it first on the table, and then we'll go back and check it on the calculator. So hit pause for a second, take a look, and we'll come on back. So the first one that they ask you to find is 98% confidence interval with a random sample of 26 observations. So we know that for 98%, we're going to be down in this column here. So then we're going to go all the way down to, let's see, if we have 26 observations, that means we'll have tw degrees of freedom of 25. So you should come up with 2.45. So 2.45 for that. For 99% confidence interval and 85 observations. Now remember for that one, what you're going to end up doing here, so 99 is going to be this second to last column or second from the right. 
Now for 85, we don't have an entry for 84 because we have 85, um, n is equal to 85, so degrees of freedom is going to be 84. So we go more conservative and we're going to pull this one right here. Because again, remember, we want to make it wider to make sure we include everything we could possibly have for that. And so from there, we're going to use, as I say here, degrees of freedom of 80. And we'll go from, uh, so T star is 2.639. Now, again, from the tech side of things, what we're going to end up doing here is that you're going to go to inverse T. So we're going to do option number four. Now, <clears throat> oops, wrong setup. And for this one, we're going to now remember for 99%, that means that we're going to have to go to 99.5% because we have to do the entire left hand time and everything but just that right hand tail. Uh, 0 0.995. Now, here are degrees of freedom. We can actually do 84. I'm going to go ahead and paste. And so there, we're going to get 2.636. Oops, and so that is how we ended up getting this number down here, all right? And now this part over here, national poll, 1,640 adults carried out by morning consult, trying to see how much they spent on an engagement ring, histogram displays results, determine the conditions for constructing a confidence interval and see if they were being met. So first one, is it random? Well, when you see the phrase random sample of 1,640, 1,640 adults, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so that's so that's basically given 10% rule, 1640 is definitely less than 10% of all Americans or all adults in the United States. And now for normal and large sample, if you look at the histogram over here, it definitely is skewed. But again, remember with random sampling, as long as our sizes are bigger, or sample sizes are bigger than 30 or sent by central limit theorem, Everything's good. The, uh, dist sampling distribution is going to end up being normal, even though everything out here is skewed. So in this case, we do meet all three options. All right. So with that, we're wrapping things up. Join us back tomorrow. We're going to finalize and kind of experience a couple of things, and then uh, and we'll finalize the whole idea of confidence interval for means, and then we'll start getting into difference of means after that. So with that being said, we'll talk to you soon.